Hello everyone, it is me, Jer Gaming here, and welcome to a bit of a different video again. I apologize for the lack of uploads on my channel. Admittedly, I've been busy with a lot of stuff, and I wasn't really in the right place or right motivation to be, you know, doing uploads and other kinds of videos like that. I've also been a lot busy with a bunch of other things, like playing several different video games that I know for a fact I was not going to record for my channel, and all that types of stuff. Um, so, while I was sitting on my butt, I was thinking maybe I guess I could record a small video that might be, you know, at least interesting to record. You know, maybe get it off my mind and see what happens. And that is the, um, where exactly has Splatoon 3 been on my channel? Or better yet, this is mostly for you guys that are on my friends list. Where, why exactly have I not been playing Splatoon 3 as much as I thought I would? Uh, I guess to put it in perspective, my friend Kelp um, on my team has played, I think right now, over a thousand hours as I speak right now. Me, on the other hand, I've only been playing for about 230 hours, which I don't know who you are, but in Splatoon 3 language, it's actually not a whole lot of time compared to a lot of other play, uh, people who've grinded the game in general. So, I guess this video is to serve why exactly that's the case, where my Splatoon 3 videos have been, and, well, why haven't I been doing Splatoon 3 at all. So, let, I'll just get into it. So, my first reason is not admittedly a whole surprising of a reason, but the online in general, and I, or I guess more of the state of Splatoon 3, kind of feels like a mess more of a mess than what Splatoon 2 felt. Not to say that as like a bad thing, like as if like, you know, like the state of the game is so horrible that it's unplayable and all that type of stuff. I mean in a sense that like the state of the game, even where it's at right now, there's something about it that just doesn't feel like it was in Splatoon 2 where you could definitely tell it was kind of complete, you know? Splatoon 2's online especially. Something about that just feels better than the online of Splatoon 3. It could just be the fact that the net coding of both games are completely different. I gotta imagine that there's a part of it where it has to do something with the hardware and that the hardware is interfering with how Splatoon 3's netcode functions, because admittedly, Splatoon 3 and Splatoon 2 are obviously two completely different games in terms of, you know, aesthetics and all that types of stuff, but I feel like it's to such a degree where there's it just feels incomplete. I'm pretty sure you don't have to be that kind of person to be on Twitter to like see all the types of clips people have been posting about the random stuff they've been finding from their experience playing the online of Splatoon 3. And admittedly, I myself have posted a, a several others, but I don't know what it is. The online, just this game in general, feels just still a bit like a mess. Despite how amazing and how much more different, how much more, I guess, balanced in terms of, you know, weapon variety and stuff, it still feels incomplete. I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about for those who actually do play the game, but it really does hurt my experience with the game because of it. This reason isn't a bit as offensive as some of the other reasons, but one of the other few things that can turn me off from a video game, as weird as it sounds, is the meta of the game. Now, for those of you who are a bit uneducated about that term in general, meta is usually used as a way of saying the optimization of the game at its toppest peak or something on the lines of that. Maybe I might be wrong in my wording and stuff, but basically it means what the game looks like at the absolute top, at your highest level, at just the highest of highest, I guess. Usually a word thrown around in the competitive scene. Usually is something like splash o is the meta and Undercover Brella is not the meta. Basically meaning that splash o is arguably the best weapon in the entire game while Undercover Brella is arguably the worst weapon in the entire game. Now, why am I talking about this and why does this in a way turn me off from Splatoon 3? It's simple. I have a really weird problem with a bunch of games where if the weapon or if the characters that I like happens to not be in the good shape of the game's running meta, usually I just don't stick around for that long. And this game, or at least argued to be a lot of people, both Splattershot Pros, aka the only few weapons I actually like playing with in the entire game, are arguably not that great. 
Which is actually kind of sad because when I first played Splatoon 3, one of the most excited things I was looking forward to was playing the Splattershot Pro in Splatoon 3. And even then, regardless of the state that it's in, I actually genuinely love the weapon. I love the sub-weapon it has, I love the special weapon it has, but admittedly, it's really hard to have fun with something if you know that's setting you back one way or another. It's kind of like that thing where it's like, you have fun doing this or doing that, but it's one of those things where it's like, you can only do it if you're carrying like, uh, 50 pounds on you while you're doing it like may maybe you have a, a joy of jogging But your only way of getting uh, good at it is if you're like jogging with like 25 pounds on each of your shoulders or something It's one of those things where it's like you know you're having you're, you're having fun some way or shape or form But it's one of those things where you get that sense of feeling where you're carrying some form of weight on you for no reason Other than you're being held back by the thing you enjoy the most and I think that's the thing that really bugs me when it comes to Splatoon 3 It's the idea that I love a weapon that's holding me back from doing something amazing getting to a higher level which Somewhat funny enough kind of leads me to my third point of what's burning me out from playing a lot of um, Splatoon 3 and I think the biggest thing that really is keeping me away from Splatoon 3 is Twitter itself. Now, it's it's no secret, it's Twitter. It's Twitter is quite literally the worst thing in all of existence, that and TikTok. It's literally the thing that keeps toxicity in toxicity and all that types of stuff. I'm not gonna lie when I say, if I've been on uh, Twitter back in the prime day or back in the heyday of Splatoon 2, I'm genuinely serious when I say there's maybe a chance I would have actually not played Splatoon 3 as, or Splatoon 2 as much as I have now if I, for whatever reason, was on Twitter. I guess one of my biggest problems with Twitter is that I never really have any room to complain about this since I feel like this is a bit of a controversial topic, but I've always had something against modern society, as, or at least the way our modern society has been shaped up to be. We've kind of grown, I guess in a sense, weak to a lot of things. It's almost impossible to talk about many things without getting one way or another ridiculed or cancelled and all that types of stuff. I'm not exactly sure how to transition into this point, but one of the biggest things I've always had against Twitter, and it has been recently showing thanks to Splatoon 3, is how people are when it comes to difficulty in video games. I don't know if any of you guys have remembered, but there was this whole controversy thing that went around where people were complaining about why every single video game under the sun one way or another should have some sort of easy mode. And a long story short, I don't agree with it. I don't think video games should ever have some sort of easy mode for the type of players that just want to, you know, have some sort of excuse to beat the game without putting the front f their front foot into it. Now, admittedly, that's a whole different can of worms that we're not going to talk about. That's kind of its own subject for another time if I ever dare get into that subject again. But why I am talking about this with Splatoon 3 is that there's a bit of it kind of showing on Twitter's side of Splatoon 3. More specifically, I guess you could say the casual players. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against casual players. If they want to play the game because they just want to play the game, you know what, that's okay. What I do have against the casual players are the ones that ridicule us for being good at the game, or maybe not us in particular, but more of people that are above them in a sense. It doesn't even have to be competitive players, just players that are in general considerably better than them. To somewhat kind of describe the toxicity and the the ridiculing that goes on on Twitter, back in the heyday or back in the olden days, usually you would be ridiculed or made fun of or picked on for being bad at something. Like, um, you know, like several insults, how people would go out of the way saying, you do this like a girl, because you know, you were generally bad at it. Nowadays, insults have been kind of flipped completely backwards. Instead of ridiculing people for being bad at something, Twitter in particular, and depending on who you are, TikTok of course, has this weird thing with ridiculing people for actually being good at something. I don't know if this is just me, but there was this one video from this one YouTuber named The Negus Corner, if I said that correctly. I hope I didn't uh, butcher that completely incorrectly and, you know, whatever, but there was this one video he released talking about a tweet someone made about how their excuse of being bad at the video game was that they have a full-time job or something like that. And the only thing I can think about that was, that's not really that good of a reason. I, myself, I mean, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm some sort of, you know, one to talk about it, but 
I myself at the moment have a part-time job, and depending on who you are, if I'm actually trying to do YouTube and all that types of stuff, technically speaking, I have the excuse to say I have a full-time job, that being I'm partly working at a warehouse and doing YouTube. And even then, you don't see me complaining about being bad at Splatoon 3. I do admit, sometimes I do get all on that sometimes, um, especially with my friends, but I'm not going on Twitter making such outrageous tweets like that. I'm not exactly sure how we even got to this point, but some way, shape, and form, we're kind of at a level where it's generally impossible to be good at this game without being, you know, made fun of one way or another, especially on Twitter. I don't know how we got to this point, but the Twitter, uns without doubt, is just one of the biggest reasons why Splatoon 3 just, I don't know, just isn't as fun as it could be. Not to mention the fact that, you know, it's Twitter we're talking about. It's not just casuals versus competitive players, it's also a bunch of things like, you know, people constantly complaining about the game in general. Valid or not, just that constantly feeding into itself really makes it kind of hard to play the game without the, um, without knowing you're kind of embracing yourself in the toxic aura that Splatoon 3 kind of oozes out a lot of the time because of Twitter. My last and likely final reason of why I haven't been playing a lot of Splatoon 3 is also for the same reason I actually haven't been playing a lot of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's because I've kind of, um, how do I explain this? Okay, l l let me start with this. So, I don't know how much of a secret it is to you guys, but my entirety of 2022 has been completely taken over by this game I've been playing a lot recently called Left 4 Dead 2. And in that game, I've kind of learned a few things, or I've kind of questioned why exactly is it I enjoy this game so much. Supposedly Left 4 Dead 2 is a bit reliant on the online, but not in the same way Splatoon 3 or Super Smash Bros Ultimate, or for that matter, Fortnite, Call of Duty, Valorant, League of Legends are. It's a different kind of reliant. And at first I was thinking, well, what is it? Is it because I actually like the game better or is it something else? And after doing just a bit of thought process and a bit of thinking, I figured that out. It's because Left 4 Dead 2, unlike every single game I just mentioned now, does not have a ranking system whatsoever. Hey guys, it's me, Editor Jared here, and it just occurred to me that I actually included Fortnite when I was talking about ranking systems, but like the dumb idiot I am, it actually took me a while to realize that Fortnite actually doesn't have a ranked mode. If anything, it actually has only one mode. You just go into the game, you fight a bunch of people, and get that number one victory royale. That's not really a ranked mode, that's just really just hopping into the game and just, you know, getting a number one spot. It's basically just winning a random match you just hopped in. I guess maybe what I should have said is that I'm not much of a fan of PvP stuff anymore, especially when it comes to online. Fortnite, Valorant, etc, etc, all those games I mentioned before, and as a topic of this video, Splatoon 3, um, I've kind of just realized that, especially after playing a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 and other single player games, I'm no longer that much of a fan of PvP online games. Now, like I said, PvP online games, there is a difference, because I have most certainly played games that are or do have some sort of PvP, like Mario Kart Double Dash, GoldenEye, Nightfire, 007, whatever, you know, all that types of stuff. But those are old games. PvP is usually, you know, a player to player right next to each other. I'm not a fan of games that are reliant on online PvPs, hence why I'm not much of a fan of Splatoon 3 anymore, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate anymore, and certainly it's been forever since I even remotely thought about playing Fortnite. I guess the reason why I don't really include Left 4 Dead 2 in that matter is because having a PvP online especially is actually optional. And if it's, in fact, it's literally why I don't really play versus mode all that often. If anything, avoid it, because not just not just the fact that it's really toxic over there, but also the fact that it's an online PvP and I don't like online PVPs. They suck. They're stinky. I hate them. So let's just continue on with the video and just keep that in mind. Meaning that, how do I explain this? Splatoon 3, for example, when I've taken a break from Splatoon 3 for about a week, maybe even longer, I think one time I took a break for about like three weeks from the game, maybe not as long as that, but it was definitely something like two weeks. I came back to the game and then I realized how completely rusty I was, at least compared to everyone. I was losing a lot of games, I was just feeling overwhelmed, and admittedly, it got to a point where there was a few solid days where I was just playing two games of Splatoon 3 that day, and then after those two games, I was just done for the day. It's because I realized Splatoon 3 
much like all the other popular first person, third person shooters, or for that matter, a lot of the fighting games nowadays have some sort of a ranking system. Now, obviously there is a reason why ranking systems are a thing in terms of gameplay stuff. It's so you can match up with people around your skill level and yada yada yada, all that types of stuff. But I'm going to a bit of a more deeper territory than that. It may be a territory that might, maybe might not come across as um, detrimental as you think. One of the biggest things I have against games with a ranking system is that it incentivizes that you grind out the game. It's literally why I've spent over 2,800 hours in Splatoon 2, and to say that's my favorite game is a bit of a is a bit of a lie. I'll say that much. I can think of plenty of games that I actually genuinely enjoy, and I can say a huge majority of them, if not probably all of them don't have some sort of a ranking system one way or another. In fact, I genuinely believed I was going to include Super Smash Bros. Ultimate in my favorite games, but the more I think about it, I'm not exactly too sure. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is a fighting game at its core, no matter what anyone says about it. And one thing a lot of fighting games have at their core is that they have a ranking system. And because they have a ranking system, it almost has this kind of mentality where the game is based around how good you are at it, rather than how much you actually love it. So it really makes me think, how much do I love Super Smash Bros. Ultimate based off what the game gives me, rather than the fact that I tried my best to play competitive at it. So once again, I decided to think about it. What about with Left 4 Dead 2 for example? By this time, I have spent over 850 hours in Left 4 Dead 2. Super Smash Bros Ultimate, I think I've spent just a little bit over twice that amount. But that's talking about a game I've had for ever since its launch date. Left 4 Dead 2 on the other hand, I only got in April of last year. 2022 and that already has caught up to even half the amount of time i spent on super smash Bros. ultimate a game i've had for four years now and obviously has way far surpassed my hours with splatoon 3 and again the reason is left 4 dead 2 along with a couple other games i've been playing in my uh half time or in my time away from you know the internet or youtube and all that type of stuff i've kind of grown to realize i genuinely enjoy playing single player games, or at the very least, I genuinely enjoy playing games that don't really opt to work around the idea that you have to be competitive at it to enjoy it, like most modern games with online systems nowadays. Maybe that's probably one of the biggest offenders to Splatoon 3. It's really hard for me to come back to the game knowing that my rust is going to catch up to me to such a level where I might just be one of the few people people complain about when they see a bunch of people with really, really bad kill-to-death ratios. Admittedly, this kind of topic I kind of somewhat plan to cover over more in a future video, but to put it shortly, I feel like ranking systems, you know, the thing that keeps it to where it opts me to want to keep playing even more, not as a way of enjoying it, but as a way of grinding it to get better at it, and also the fact that, you know, the online, somewhat like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, isn't as great as I hope it was, or I hoped it was, or just as we all wish it was. Especially Smash Ultimate, oh my goodness, is that online really terrible? It really makes it hard for me to enjoy this game. Well, with that out of the way, I think that might have been everything I covered over on why it's been a bit since I've played Splatoon 3 or why it's taking forever to me to do some kind of content on this game. I don't know when I'll be uploading those videos, but there is one video that I do kind of plan on uploading sometime later in the future, and that is the background footage you were seeing here of me actually playing in a uh, tournament with uh, one of my other few friends, Stormy Senpai. So I hope you look forward to that. I actually genuinely enjoyed playing in that tournament, despite my performance not being so great. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel for whatever reason, even though it was just more of a me ranting. Um, I'll see you guys whatever you do next. Take care. God bless you guys. And just in case I have to reiterate this, if you actually do enjoy Splatoon 3 much like any other first-person, third-person shooter, I hope this video doesn't make you think twice about it. If you genuinely enjoyed those games, okay, fine, whatever. I'm just here to tell you why I, and maybe a couple other people, are starting to lose interest in games that are so focused around ranking systems and online matchmaking and, you know, just all the types of ridiculous stuff. Until then, God bless you guys, and please have a good rest of your day.